Welcome to The Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. Hey guys, today I wanted to start off by saying thank you to the thousands of people who so loyally tune in to the Heal Podcast every week, including my mom. Love you, mom. Your constant messages of gratitude and genuine appreciation for my work are truly humbling and keep me going even in the most overwhelming of times. I love our Heal family and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and light each and every one of you bring to this community. On today's episode, I interview my personal breathwork coach, Gwen Dittmar. Gwen is so much more than just a certified breathwork teacher. She has a master's in spiritual psychology, is a soul-centered certified coach, Usui Reiki master, and is studying additional methodologies of healing, including human design work. Originally from Philly, she climbed the pharmaceutical and biotech research corporate ladder, then went on to study ancient healing modalities and eventually came out of the spiritual closet and started serving clients. Today, we talk about the power of our breath to blast us wide open, shake up our sacred tantrum, and let go of all the suppressed, stuck, emotion, trauma, and stress in our systems. Beyond the power of our breath, we also talk about how tools like a human design reading can wake us up to who we really are so we can operate with grace, acceptance, and full-blown confidence in who we are and what we came to this life to do. I hope you love this conversation as much as I did. Gwen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. So you are one of my personal healers, I guess. Is that what you call it? Practitioners? coaches. Um, You're my breathwork coach. And man, I have had some trans, like just incredibly powerful experiences with breath. And um, I'm so excited to talk to you about everything you do today, because you are like a superpower life, spiritual breathwork coach. What, what, what do you call yourself? What, what, what do you, how do you describe the work you do and, and kind of what, what led you to do the work you do? Yeah. Well, I struggle with what term to use also, because it, none of them feel like they really encapsulate it. So I just, I've started to use the word activation, like just activating, um, you know, what's inside of you to, for you to be aware of it and for you to be connected to it and to be able to live from it. And that's something that came through me learning about my human design and also through breath work and just years of coaching. But um, I mean, what led me to this was I was living a very traditional, I would say kind of in the matrix experience of get a good job, go to grad school, you know, um, have the title, make good money, buy a house. And I started on that trajectory and I had a lot of those things, but I was so unhappy. And I kept searching, I kept looking since I was a child and um, I knew there was something more for me and I knew I was meant to be doing more. I just was very scared of what that was because I think I also had a knowing of what it was and it was so different from what I had been raised in and what was what I thought was successful or traditional. Mm -hmm. So um, it took some time, you know, but I finally, I finally stepped out and started doing what I feel like I'm really supposed to be doing here. Amazing. Um, And how did you step out? Did you have your own healing journey or like kind of, you know, sometimes we get knocked off our course and then we look at things a little differently or like what, what kind of gave you the courage to make a left turn? Yeah, I would say it was a succession of things, you know, like when I was real young, I was sick, they couldn't figure out what was going on with me, I had a near death experience. Um, And that like really um, woke me up. But again, I was so young, I was very scared. And, um, and then I just pushed myself to try to be normal. And I think that you know, compounded everything. And then, yes, I probably got knocked off. You know, I um, went into pharmaceutical and biotech research and I really felt like, okay, I'll be able to help people through this more traditional 
accepted lens and right. But I was just miserable. And so, you know, I didn't totally get pushed off, but I think in a way I did like through my sobriety and through my recovery, I think that was like a nudge that this is not how you're supposed to be living. Um, and then eventually, you know, the pharmaceutical stuff, it did become very, very clear that I, that I couldn't keep doing it. It wasn't, it wasn't not that, um, I mean, we could go down a whole rabbit hole of that conversation, but, (laughs) (laughs) but for time purposes, yeah. I mean, I, you know, what's interesting about the pharmaceutical stuff is that, um, you know, in doing research, like I felt like I wasn't on the, the bad side, which is like the money and the pushing and the selling. I felt like, no, I'm connected to things that are, you know, here to try to help people. But what I started learning from my own experience of healing, um, you know, the, the illness that I had when I was a teenager was that I didn't want to take medication. I wanted to heal myself and I knew I could heal myself. And even as a 14 year old, I knew that there was a deeper reason I was experiencing it. And I kept telling my parents that like, I just, there's something else that's going on here. Right. And through the years, right. I've learned that like, I was having this like spiritual kind of psychic, like awakening. And it was like, my body had no idea how to hold it but it was showing up in this Western way of like, you know, Meniere's disease and ringing and vertigo and losing my hearing. I mean, when we talk about the spirituality of things that we're feeling in our body, right? Like I wasn't willing to hear what I knew inside. And it just got louder and louder and louder to the point where it literally knocked me out of my life. Um, And so, you know, after the near death, I mean, that definitely did wake me up to realize that I wanted to heal it. I knew I could heal it and that there was so much more living to do. Like I wasn't done, right? There was a reason why I came back. Um, But I think it's just, you know, like it was just very hard to stay on that path when I didn't have a lot of support to live that way. I think that's something that I see a lot. And I don't know if you do too, that you know, I had a breathwork session yesterday with somebody who's a nurse, right? Really mired in the traditional medical system mm-hmm. and just so disheartened, like just so disenchanted, but like breathwork is not anything that she really has in her life, right? Like none of these modalities that I use or like you access a lot, it's not her norm, right? So she's like, really, there's people that exist that want to do this and that want to talk about this and that want to be friends in Mm -hmm. in these realms. And I'm like, yes. And so it's like, I kind of saw that in her yesterday, that part of me that was just so like unsupported in what I was here to do. And it Mm -hmm. wasn't really until like I moved to California where I just started to meet different people that um, led me to like that next community, that next experience, that next like tribe that was, Mm. that was where I felt home finally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, let's just dive right into breath work because, (laughs) you know, I get very passionate about everybody that comes on this show and, you know, I just want to share everything that's worked for me with other people, but I just keep coming back to breath work because it's once you learn how to do it, I mean, working with you, you know, of course there's an exchange of resources because of your time and everything, but you can, if you learn how to do breath work, I mean, this, we literally have every tool we need in our biology to heal, you know, pretty much everything, unless your soul has a different contract and, and you're not supposed to heal, you know, is what I believe um, because of some sort of evolutionary lesson or learning or experience or, you know, and then that's, that's a kind of a crude way of, of saying a very complicated topic, but um, I really do believe that we have so much potential to heal. And every time I do breath work, I'm just blown away at what it brings up, um, what it moves. So explain to people who haven't tried it or have kind of heard of it or think that it's like yoga, but it's not like explain, explain what yoga, uh, what breath work is and what it's doing. Like, cause I, I mean, I've had, I had two, I mean, this session I had right before this podcast with you, it was like 
there was, it was so spiritual for me. Like the, I didn't even go through this with you, but at the end, like what was coming up and the, the realizations I was coming up. And then the last, um, the previous one we did, it was so intense to the point where I almost had to stop and cry out for help because it was so intense, the amount of energy that was moving through. So um, I likened it to like ayahuasca. It was that intense just with our very own breath. So can you just explain what breath work is, what it looks like and, and what it's doing for us emotionally and physically? Well, I love that you pointed out that, you know, like if people have done yoga, if people have done like maybe even, you know, Wim Hof, I think there's a breath work tool that's for everything. Um, and I think there's power to everything and also different modalities speak and work for different people, right? Like, just like you mentioned about, we each have our own contract and what we came here to do and to experience. And sometimes, right, we can do all the healing in the world, but it's still like what our soul incarnated here to learn and to experience. And we never know how that's gonna touch other people, right, our experience, even if it's mis you know, misfortune for us. Um, but yeah, you know, breath work is there's tools and tools are wonderful. Like, right. I do lots of tools, five, five breathing, four, seven, eight breathing, box breathing, um, for in the moment, but the breath work healing that you're, you're talking about is definitely more of a, I would say a healing modality, like a ceremony of sorts, because, um, it is, it's your like what you're doing when you're breathing is that you're, you're, you're activating like both your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system, right? So you're, you're allowing the body to move energy in your belly, in your chest, and then you're exhaling. But as you're expanding the belly, right, you're opening up not only your solar plexus, that center, you're also opening up like your sacral below, you're opening up your root energy. So we hold so much energy in our body and you're opening up your heart, you're opening up your, your throat, your third eye, your crown. So when you're breathing in this fashion, you're also kind of, you're moving into a different state of consciousness, which is why a lot of people say that it feels like they're doing a plant ceremony because you're doing that. You're moving past your normal thinking brain you're bypassing the mind so you can enter into that different state of consciousness. And then when you're in a different state of consciousness, you can see things differently, right? Like that's why doing mushrooms or doing ayahuasca, it's like you see the world through a different lens and breath work is incredible because it's, it's not something you're ingesting. It's, it's within you and you're connecting to your life force. So it's like, I always tell people, it's like, you're, you're letting your life force become your healer, like your breath. And when you're moving in, in that pattern just over and over again, usually what happens is people start to bump up against the things that are what they bump up against in human life, but it's so easy to get distracted in human life. It's so easy to fall into the mind, the old mindset or the misbelief or the emotional, you know, reactive pattern that we have, or even just the, you know, the automatic like trauma response that we have to, to physically do something or shut down or flight, you know, or freeze or, so what the breath work does is it, it gives you something physically to do so that you activate that executive functioning, but you're also entering into that different state of consciousness so that when you encounter something, you're still moving through it. You're still breathing through it. Um, it's incredible. I mean, I, I personally love it too, because it's, it's not something I need to go away and do. It's not something I need to come down after eight hours of doing it. Like it really is. I mean, we just did it prior to the podcast and you're here, right? And you're cognizant, but you're also bringing in those awarenesses that you had that maybe you weren't able to see through just your thinking mind. Yeah. And it's so helpful because I, I have been doing Wim Hof every day just as like a tool, like you said, you know, um, but working with you, it is a ceremony. And I like literally have anxiety before coming into the session with you because I'm like, I know so much is going to shift and heal and release. And um, so like, what can, what have you seen heal? What, like, what, 
what have you seen people work through with breath work um, with you? I know it's good for, I mean, so much emotional issues and tra and past trauma. I mean, we store it in our tissues. And when you're doing breath work, it feels like your whole body. Sometimes it feels like a gorilla is standing on your thighs. Sometimes it feels like your hands are clenching and it's like you can't open them. That's how powerful the energy is coming out of the, the, the tips of your hands or your mouth is like, like very funny. Ripping. So yeah, it's gripping. And um, so there's clearly, phys you're having a physical response to moving this energy that's been stagnant for a long time. So what, what, what have you seen um, that people can kind of address through their breath? I mean, like you said, I have seen a lot of things. I mean, I've seen people work through cancer, right? If that's what their soul incarnated here to do, I think some people, you know, I see a lot of people have these huge awarenesses around anxiety that they realize that this particular breath can almost make them feel like they're having anxiety or an anxiety attack. But what they, you know, what uh, it's so incredible, like when people realize like, wow, actually my body wanted to breathe. It was trying to breathe. It's just, I didn't know how to do it or there was so much stored that, that I, I didn't know how to continue breathing. Um, you know, I've seen people, right, with depression and anxiety and, um, you know, addiction. I've definitely seen a lot of female physiological um, challenges, whether it's like with their fertility or their menstrual cycles. I've seen a lot of people heal digestive issues, um, asthma. I've seen that too. Like that's another common one that like shows up in the circles that people realize they, they were, they didn't realize there wasn't enough breath, but there wasn't enough breath because there was, there was, there were things that were stuck and stagnant, or there was a trauma that happened with asthma and not being able to breathe. So really learning how to like move that energy through. Um, I'm trying to think it's so many, it's just like, it's really incredible. And I think it's, I think a lot of what you said is accurate is that like, our breath is our life force. I always, I always try to tell this to people like, you know, I watched myself have my daughter and, and watch her come out of the water and take her first breath and like, just feel that whoosh of, of just this different energy of life, right? Like come in. And I was with my mom when she took her last breath and feeling that whoosh of like life leaving. And like our breath is really the portal. It is like the vessel to, to why we're here and how we're here. Right. So it's like when we really connect and, and activate that there's, there's so much that can move in our body. That's has been stagnant, that has been stuck, that's been blocked, that's been trapped, that's been closed off. Right. A lot of times, like when we're gripping, like in the breath work with the hands, not like we're trying to do that, or even if it's like showing up in your mouth, it's like a lot of it is feedback. It's like, what, what are you like holding on to? Like what control, right? Are we trying to have in life or like, what is like trapped here? Like what is not being said that needs to be said? So I would say overall, a general trend that I do see with people that, that do this breath work is they start to just, I don't know how to, like they just start to become who they are. And like a lot of the, like either witch wound or the ways they keep themselves small or stuck or quiet or unexpressed or like disconnected and disconnected from nature and, and a being an extension of nature. I see that just as a general trend with people, they start like singing, they start writing, they start creating. They also start to have a very different connection with nature, right? And like wanting to take care of nature, wanting to like be in nature, wanting to, to be a good steward. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, it is. It's like a reboot. It's almost like a hitting the reset button because there's all these like files and viruses and everything that's going on and messing up your, your mental software and physical software. And after years of just, 
I mean, we do, if we can't, if we don't have the tools, which many of us are not taught in childhood, you know, hopefully now we're starting to teach this future generation doing it the best we can, but we, we didn't know how to express emotion in a healthy way. You know, we are like kind of the generations that came after the fifties of like putting it all together and holding it in and being polite poly. And, um, and so we, 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 when we don't have the tools to express in a healthy way or grieve properly or face, you know, the, the during a trauma, we, we, we literally just like freeze and, and hold that information, that emotional imprint in energetically in our system. And so this is like, if you, breath work is like a way to just lift up the carpet and like release all the dust, like get everything up and out and, and, I, I honestly just, I mean, even just grief, I get emotional every time because we're all, we've all held within something, just a little wound of a day or like a trauma or a loss. And we, we were never taught how to grieve properly. It's just this beautiful um, healing modality where we use our own breath guided by someone like you, because it does get intense sometimes. And, and we just get everything up and out that no longer serves us. And it, it brings things to the surface so we can heal, so we can cry, so we can scream, so we can just unstuck ourselves. And it's, oh, I just freaking love it. You know, to me, it's like, it's like kids, right? Kids, if they're not conditioned to be polite poly and the good girl and to be quiet and to be perfect, if kids have a safe space to be expressed, they express like they're very, they're, they have a very healthy um, ego self-esteem system, right? They, they get angry about something, they express their anger, they move their body somehow, right? They tantrum or they shake, which is how our, our system needs to release that, that debris that it moved through, right? Like you look at most mammals, they shake after they've had a traumatic experience, which is while also why shaking is, you know, really great for vagal toning and, it, you know, improving your, your vagus nerve. And so it's like when you're, when you're breathing, you're giving yourself, like you said, that space to, to have the sacred tantrum, right? To have the, the space to, to let out the emotion so that you don't have to hold it anymore. And that's why a lot of times, like within coaching, you know, people will, I love mindset work. I love like, you know, visualization. I love, I think emotional processing is super important. And at the same time, a lot of people that come to breath work have done either, you know, mental mindset work, limiting belief work, they've done emotional work. And then when they breathe and they're, you know, tight and cramped, they're like, wait a second. I thought I was doing everything. And it's just such a beautiful representation of like, no, that's where the energy still is. Like you've done a great job at shifting your mindset and, and not being a victim and really being like an empowered person and choosing, right? Or you've done a lot of work to know how to grieve or how to feel sadness, how to feel joy, how to feel fear and how to use these emotions like as God, as wise guides for where we do want to go and what we do need to do as part of our, whatever, our soul contract. But then like when people breathe and they see and feel where the energy, like, why were my hands doing that? Oh, it's usually because it's connected to your heart. And there's like, are you like, is there still some protection, right? Or is there still some fear around really allowing yourself to be in the unbearable love? that can exist inside of us. And most humans, yes, right? That's why a lot of people get the cramping hands, but it's it's such a clear indication. I think that's the other thing where I like it is that, you know, I have a lot of left arrows and human design and I tend to be, I like things a particular way. Um, and so it just gives that framework of like, it's super clear, right? super clear when we're breathing as to what wants to move through us in that particular session. And like you said, each session is so different based on who you are, what you've moved through, what you're available for. Yes. Right? Oh my gosh. Um, so talk to me about human design because uh -huh. uh, that's one of your, I, I just, I think I just heard about it for the first time from you a few weeks ago. Uh, I've, I've heard other people mention it, but I was never compelled to do it. And, and you just read my chart and it's like, 
it's pretty freaking phenomenal how accurate it is. So what is human design? Um, yeah, just what is human design? I mean, well, my understanding of human design is that it's a, it draws from a lot of ancient wisdom, ancient philosophies. So it draws from astrology, quantum physics, the I Ching, the hexagram, the Kabbalah tree of life, the Hindu chakra system, and it downloads it all into one body, body graph and, and, you know, information system. And so it was downloaded by a, a person by the name of Ra Uruhu um, through a, from what I hear, a non-drug induced mystical experience that he had. And he downloaded how all of these things connect and, um, you know, it's so accurate. It's like most people have the experience that you had when, when they're hearing about it, because it's, it, you know, there's also this philosophy that it is a transmission. So it's like, once you look at it and you see it, it opens something inside of you where you have a, a resonance and a recognition, a remembrance of of who you really are, right? Like what came into your physical form when you chose to incarnate into this unique experience, right? With all the different learnings and, um, you know, challenges and, and opportunities through your uniqueness. And what I love about it is that it, like similar to breath work, it's a very clear picture, right? I mean, yes, breath work can be a little like, confusing at some points of why, <laughs> why is this happening? Why am I seeing purple lights or why am I seeing this interesting face, you know, and it's really for the, the breather to attune to what that is for them. Um, but like human design does kind of the same thing where it gives you the snapshot of who you are. And so that you can allow yourself to be who you are. Like you have permission to be what's unique for you versus pushing and forcing yourself to be what society conditions us to be or what, what everyone else is, right? Like, is it okay if I say what you are? Oh yeah, sure. So, so you're a projector, right? So as a projector, it's so important for you to know that you're not meant to like go all the time. Yeah. Right. It, it cycles of rest are really important. And so, but our society doesn't tell us that, right. Our society tells us like, go to work or start your business and, and build it and work it and do it and collaborate and create. And, you know, it's like, it's this constant drive. And that's really, really awesome for people that have a sacral energy, right? Because they have this constant life force motor that's just always moving. So they can do that, right? They're the people that, you know, one of my best friends is, has sacral energy. And it's just like, she just constantly, like she's taking this class, she's doing this. She's doing, and meanwhile, I'm looking for space to rest and relax and restore myself because mm -hmm. I don't have that sacral energy either. So it's like just even somebody knowing that about themselves yes. gives them permission to say, oh, wow, I get burned out and exhausted working, you know, nine to five. Or like I've had a couple of clients who are nurses and they have other nursing friends that just can show up to the shift and do double shifts and do the whole thing. And they are wiped out, depleted. Um, so like knowing that is so important. It gives, it gives you permission to, to be who you are. Um, and also too, it really helps people make decisions, really connect into what's called your authority and also connect into like your strategy for how to live your life. And again, everyone is different. So it's like when I do this with teams, it's so eye-opening for people on teams to realize, oh, like if, you know, we were on the same team and we had another person on our team that was, that had that sacral energy, they might look at you and think like, oh, she's so lazy, right? Or like, she's not doing as much as everybody else. Like, why does she need to rest all the time? So it's like when people have a deeper understanding of who you are and how your energy works, there, there doesn't need to be judgment. It's just like, this is just who you are. This is your energy. And like, same for me. And they get to be who they are. And then also everybody gets to be in their strengths 
because we all have strengths, right? Like projectors are really amazing at managing and directing and guiding others. They're super intuitive. They're super um, like magnetic. They have this like projectors have this magnetic quality to them that just draws people in. Um, and, you know, that other person might not have that, right? So it's like in a business, you can kind of see you would have a really different function than the other person that has that sacral energy and vice versa. So I love it that it, it allows us to make clear decisions that feel really aligned for us versus forcing us to make decisions the way other people do or to eat or to live or to be in environments or to like manifest. I mean, it goes into all these areas. So fantastic. It's really specific. And that's why I love things like this, because you get this feedback that I, I would argue would probably resonate 99% of the time. And then we all operate with these blind spots. Um, and so, you know, having this like laid out in front of you and walked through the blind spots come to light because you're like, oh my gosh, it's because I have this strategy or this personality um, motivator or whatever. I just kind of read some of the things, but it really is fascinating. And I, and I believe that it gives you just knowing that everybody has their specific, I mean, it's so mathematical and so mystical and so cool, but everybody has their specific strengths and weaknesses and, and containers and lenses. And so you have compassion for people and go, oh, I don't need to expect them to operate exactly like me because they have completely different motivations and strategies and planets and this and that, you know? Exactly. Yes. You know, it's like, different people have different authorities, right? So some authorities are emotion and emotional authority. And that's when people have a lot of emotion and they kind of have to move through an emotional wave before they want to make a decision, right? So even like as a coach, it's so helpful for me to know somebody's human design because like our society might say, oh, just do it, you know, just follow your gut and just do it. <laughs> but, but for somebody with an emotional authority, they actually go through lots of different waves of emotions before they get clear on what their choice is, right? So it's like teaching people how to move through that emotional wave and, and noticing, okay, how did I feel about this that, that decision I wanna make like in the morning when I wake up and I'm like grumpy? How did I feel about that choice I wanna make in the afternoon, right? How do I feel about that when I'm having family with my dinner? How do I feel about it at bedtime when I'm in a relaxing bath? And then maybe like the next morning they come to, you know, like I still want to do that. Or like, you know what, this is still a no for me. I've moved through like, oh, maybe I could do it. No, maybe, no, 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 no. Right. And they come to the no. And then like, you know, individuals have splenic authority. And so splenic is your intuition, right? It's, it's like you have a direct knowing of what's right for you and what's not right for you, even if you hear the noise. So what's super important is for those individuals to really learn how to listen to their, their intuition and really trust their intuition. Like I have another interesting, another nursing client and she discovered she was a splenic uh, projector. She's like, oh my gosh, I always know the answer, but I push myself to like bypass it or you know, like do an atomic habit over it or whatever it is, right? And she's like, I can just trust that thing that I feel. I'm like, yeah, you totally can, right? So like everybody has a unique, um, and then people that have sacral authority, what's super important for them is for them to come down into their sacral center and ask a question about a decision from there. So it's really like sacral energies, they can say yes or no, they can feel a yes or a no in their sacral center. Or they, a lot of times will go, mm-hmm, or like, mm, mm and they'll be, because your voice is connected to your sacral. So they, they can make decisions that way. And like, when I have coaching clients that have that, asking them open-ended questions really like is even more confusing for them, right? So like, I might get trained in a particular coaching modality that's like, ask open questions and let them be curious and let them come to their own answers since discovering human design, it's so easy to guide people. I'm like, do you want to hire this financial advisor? And they're like, no. <laughs> you know? 
I'm like, do you feel like you should hire this particular financial advisor? Yeah. Do you feel like you're getting pressured by your husband to hire this particular financial advisor? Yes. Is there somebody else that you're feeling is going to be better for you? Yes. Right. So it's like they just kind of know immediately um, and it makes it very simple. So I usually tell people when they're discovering their, their sacral to just practice asking silly yes or no questions. Like, do you want to go out for sushi tonight? No. Right. Do you want to go have something? Yes. And it's a, it's a great way for them to learn how to really listen to their sacral, which is what I love about human design. It's not, and nothing is centered in the mind. It's all about coming into the wisdom of your body, right? The wisdom of the emotional wave that you have, the wisdom of your sacral, the wisdom of your spleen. Some people have heart, they have ego authority. So it's like, if is your heart in it? And if someone's heart is not in it and that's their authority, they're better off saying no versus pushing themselves to do it their heart's going to drive them. And if they don't have that drive, it doesn't even matter if they work hard. It's not the magnetic of their heart isn't going to be connecting to what needs to come in. It's really totally. beautiful. Wow. Um, I can't wait to dive more in because I, I, I also feel like as you get this feedback and you learn more about how you operate, it frees up so much energy because then you could just trust and not overthink it or not beat yourself up for the way you operate. Like for instance, I've procrastinated my whole life. I'm a procrastinator. Like I crammed for tests in, at, in college at Berkeley. And I like somehow would get A's and B's. I wouldn't retain any information, but um, it worked for me. You know, I just, I, I can, I can take in a lot of information, memorize it, even like recall what it's written on a page and you then know, this is in your human design so we didn't totally get to all your centers beforehand but you is it okay if i say that I, you yeah have, you have a defined root you have a defined root chakra so when that's defined you have you have like this quick adrenaline energy that you can access it's not something that you want to be using all the time though because it's not it's not ongoing it's like a fire, right? So if you use it up, you're, you can burn it out, right? So, but that is where people that have that defined root center, like when I'm coaching them, I, they're like, oh, I didn't do that homework again this week. And I'm like, you know what? You're going to do it. You're going to do it like 15 minutes before it's due. And like, that's okay. You know, that's just, you're going to have that shot of adrenaline and you're going to be able to get it done. And so that's totally something I would tell people, like, if you tend to procrastinate, let that be okay. Like not everybody is meant to be planning things in advance the way others are. And then the other thing where you were talking about how you learn, right? You have um, in your awareness, there's, there's these four arrows. I don't know if you saw them when we looked at the chart, but there's your, your ideal way of eating, your ideal environment to be in, and then your ideal way that you perceive the world. And then also the ideal way that you have awarenesses and that you learn. So your awareness arrow is pointing to the left, which means that those people learn through like logic, they learn through memorizing, they learn through more traditional ways of studying um, and they can like regurgitate that information. They tend to focus if they're very strategic and focused on what they're doing. So it's like, they look, or let's say, for instance, if you do a human design, right, a human design reading or like an astrology reading, you'll go into it based on where you are, like what you want to learn and what you want to focus on. And you'll see that and you'll hear that and you'll be able to regurgitate that. And then you might come back to it like a month later and think to yourself like, oh, my God, I totally like didn't even hear that other part that they were talking about. It's just because that's not where your strategy, your strategic focus is. But when that's pointing to the right, you know, those people tend to be people that don't do well taking tests, memorizing information. It's like they are better at seeing the whole big picture versus all those like logical steps. So like what you described is totally in your design. And, and when people know that about themselves, then they don't, like you said, they don't have to judge or make themselves wrong. Yeah. And like, you know, 
as you talked about, like, I, I know my husband has sacral energy. He is go, go, go nonstop. And I'm like, everybody around him is exhausted and he just continues to add new things to his to-do list. Um, and, and is incredible in that way. And so, and I'm like, I need to constantly, I'm also go, go, go. I don't really give myself that time to rest, but I'm constantly needing to have, like meditate, like if I don't meditate and I'm going to burn out because that's my rest, even though I can get it in short spurts or lie down with my two-year-old or get body work or do, you know, I'm constantly doing healing things because I just, I need that restorative, um, you know, to fill my tank because I'm just going, going, going. So it's just so, this feedback is really brilliant because not only can you um, understand yourself more in the way you operate and give yourself more grace or like more confidence, you know, in some of the things and the ways you do things. Cause you're like, Oh, well, that's just who I am. That's how I do it. Yeah. Uh, but you can also have more grace and, and learn how to even like doing your children or your husband, like learn how to communicate with them because you know, that they don't learn the same way as you or whatever. So it's really, this is really fascinating. I have seen, I have had several clients that were like married for, you know, 40, 50 years and just kind of like at that brink of like, do I really want to be unhappily married for these last 10 years of my life? I think I need to end this. And then they learn about their human design. They learn about their partner's human design and it completely changes the relationship because there's just this, this, un, this deeper understanding of, oh my gosh, you know, my partner has not been trying to be annoying or they haven't had unresolved trauma. It's like, they literally are just different than me and they do things very differently than me and they have a different energy that's moving through them. Like you said, it just gives people a lot of compassion and grace, I think for themselves and for others. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. What are the common challenges you're seeing with your clients right now and yeah. how are you helping them work through it right now? Like in particular right now, uh, I would say in general, I tend to have a lot of people that have built successful lives and they're still not feeling happy. They're still like, they're still looking for something. They're still wondering like, what is my purpose? Or they had a long stretch of feeling very fulfilled by that career or that, you know, that life that they had built. And then they start feeling like there's, there's something more, you know, it's like those three questions of who am I really, what am I doing here and how can I do it in a way that contributes to society? And that also allows me to like, take care of myself and my family. Um, I definitely find a lot of people are just asking that question. And I think like that's popping more and more and more. And, and when people breathe that, really opens up that portal of what am I doing here? Like truly, like, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing here? And a lot of times people stay with what they're doing. It's just the frequency of how they're doing it totally changes, you know, the way that they're relating to themselves and the way they're relating to their life and their responsibilities, that's what shifts. And then other people make transitions and they, they change. I would also say a lot of people come to me um, feeling like they have trauma and they either have an understanding of it or they've done, you know, they've done some work around it, but they're still like just noticing the same patterns. They're noticing themselves like still engaged in the same thing. Um, just maybe a different picture or a different person or a different job, a different situation. And they really want to like shift that once and for all. Um, and then I would also say a lot of women come to me feeling like they, they, they know there's more power and they know there's more light inside of them. So it's not just like a purpose thing. It's more of like, I know I have gifts inside of me and I've, I've kept them quiet, right? Or I've been afraid of them, or I'm just afraid in general of like, if I open this box, like, because it's so unknown and I, I don't know if I'll still be normal, if I'll still have a normal life. Like, I think a lot of people are very curious about this type of work, but I think they're also kind of scared that 
they're going to like end up going crazy or they're going to end up like feeling like they need to leave their life and go live in an ashram, you know? And I think, I think a lot of people maybe are attracted to me because I'm very mired in human life. You know, like I'm a mom, I'm a single mom. I have two small children. I, they, they have two dads. Like <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, like, you know what that's like. There's a lot of managing, <laughs> right? I mean, there's a lot of managing human life, but there's also this just un like believable it's like undescribable feeling that is possible to live and to feel and to embody even when you're paying bills and you're are you know you're arguing with a co-parent <laughs> and you're you know you're being a single parent like there's just this magic that is totally available and i think I think that's what people are looking for. I think that's what people are looking for when they're doing plant ceremonies, when they're doing mushroom ceremonies, when they're like wanting to just check out and rebel, you know, mm -hmm. they're looking for that magic, like, like not just fleeting experiences of that magic, but like really how to live from that place as a human to live in that magic. Absolutely. And that's the experience I had today at the end of breathwork. I was like, just overwhelmed with gratitude and awe. It's a reconnection. It's a reconnection to yourself. We're so good at staying in our comfort zone and, and compartmentalizing and suppressing and repressing and avoiding and escaping and denying. And so when you breathe, you just bust right out of that comfort zone. It's so uncomfortable and you re you just get every cell in your body, every everything vibrating on this you just it's just like a full reset and reconnection to yourself and and then you just can't help but get back on the path of what you truly came here to do so it really is so beautiful i love your work wow. um, where can people find you what are you doing now like yeah. next, I think you have a program in November or something. I do. So I'm teaching, I am teaching breath work, but it's also, it also has other components to it. So it has like the processing work. It has energy work. Um, because I do feel like those other levels of consciousness are really important. Like having a big, beautiful breath work experience is, is amazing, but it's like, how do you, how do you process that? And how do you integrate that into your daily life so that you can live from that place? more and more and more. So that's coming up in November. And then I also do just have a rolling, a rolling group, which is a coaching group where we move into, you know, mindset, heart set, you know, your life set, human design, all of it. And um, that's called the rise group. And then I also have another offering that I just started, which is called the moon mastery, which I think is like one of the ways that women can start to connect to some of that magic, which is really about learning not only about your menstrual cycle, but also about how to use the energy of the moon. Um, and so in that group, we have, you know, guided breath work and meditation and journaling and, you know, some live calls so that you can really start to find that magic inside of yourself as a woman and that, that mystery and that wild side that you have through your cycle, through the, through the moon. Woo woo. That sounds like some cool witchy woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome. And so, um, Gwen Dittmar.com is where they yeah. should go. Gwen Dittmar.com and, uh, Gwen Dittmar on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you for how you've changed my life. And, um, I look yeah. forward to diving more into that human design report. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.